the human skeletal system. Do you have any idea how many bones you have in your body? 206. Yes, it's correct. But did you know that the number of bones you have changes from when you are a baby to when you are grown up? It's true. Babies start out with more than 300 bones. Over time, these bones grow and merge together to form 206 bones present in an adult human body. These bones form a framework with several cartilages which is known as the skeletal system. It is grouped into two principal divisions, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. Let's start by learning about the axial skeleton system. It comprises of 80 bones distributed along the main axis of the human body. The skull, vertebral column, sternum and ribs constitute the axial skeleton system. The skull is made up of two sets of 22 bones classified into cranial and facial bones. Cranial bones are eight in number. They form the cranium which is the hard protective outer covering for the brain while the facial region is made up of 14 skeletal elements which form the front part of the skull. A single U-shaped bone called hyoid is present at the base of the buccal cavity and it is also included in the skull. Each middle ear consists of three tiny bones called malleus, incus and stapes which is the smallest bone of the body. These three collectively form the ear ossicles. The skull region joins with the superior region of the vertebral column with the help of two occipital condyles called dicondylic skull. The vertebral column of a human body is formed by 26 serially arranged units called vertebrae and it is dorsally placed. Each vertebra has a central hollow portion known as the neural canal through which the spinal cord passes. The first vertebra, known as the atlas, articulates with the occipital condyles. Starting from the skull, the vertebral column is differentiated into seven cervicals, twelve thoracics, five lumbar, one sacral and one fused coccygeal regions. Functions of the vertebral column are to protect the spinal cord, support the head and serve as the point of attachment for the ribs and musculature of the back. The sternum is a flat bone on the ventral midline of the thorax. There are 12 pairs of ribs. Each rib is a thin flat bone connected dorsally to the vertebral column and ventrally to the sternum. The first seven pairs of ribs are known as true ribs. Dorsally, they are attached to the thoracic vertebrae and ventrally they are connected to the sternum with the help of hyaline cartilage. The 8th, 9th and 10th pairs of ribs do not articulate directly with the sternum but join the 7th rib with the help of hyaline cartilage. These are called vertebrochondral or false ribs. While the last two pairs, 11th and 12th, of ribs are not connected ventrally and are therefore called floating ribs. Thoracic vertebrae, ribs and sternum together form the rib cage of the human body. This completes the axial skeleton. Now let's move on to learn about the appendicular skeleton system. The bones of the limbs along with their girdles constitute the appendicular skeleton. Each limb is made of 30 bones. The bones of the hand, that is, forelimb, are humerus, radius, and ulna, carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. Wrist bones or carpals are 8 in number, while the palm bones or metacarpals are 5 in number. Legs or hind limbs comprises of the femur or thigh bone which is the longest bone of the body, tibia and fibula. Tarsals or ankle bones are seven in number. Metatarsals are five in number and phalanges are 14 in number form the bones of the legs or hind limb. The kneecap is a cup-shaped bone called patella, covers the knee ventrally. 
pectoral and pelvic girdle bones help in the articulation of the upper and the lower limbs respectively with the axial skeleton. Each girdle is comprised of two halves. Each half of the pectoral girdle consists of a clavicle and a scapula. The scapula is a large triangular flat bone situated in the dorsal part of the thorax between the second and the seventh ribs. The dorsal, flat, triangular body of scapula has a slightly elevated ridge called the spine which projects as a flat, expanded process called the acromion. The clavicle articulates with the acromion. Below the acromion is a depression called the glenoid cavity which articulates with the head of the humerus to form the shoulder joint. Each clavicle is a long slender bone with two curvatures. This bone is commonly called the collar bone. Pelvic girdle consists of two coxal bones. Each coxal bone is formed by the fusion of three bones which are ilium, ischium and pubis. At the point of fusion of the above bones is a cavity called acetabulum to which the thigh bone articulates. The two halves of the pelvic girdle meet ventrally to form the pubic symphysis containing fibrous cartilage. This completes the appendicular skeleton. Let's answer a few questions asked in medical entrance exams. Question Which one protects the brain? 1. Calcium 2. Cranium 3. Cerebellum 4. Cerebrum this question was asked in BHU PMT 2011. Solution The skull is composed of two sets of bones, cranial and facial. Cranial bones are eight in number and they form the hard protective outer covering, cranium, for the brain. Hence, option 2 is the correct answer. Question Which is the largest bone of a human body? 1. Tarsal 2. Humerus 3. Ulna 4. Femur This question was asked in Ames 2009. Solution Femur or thigh bone is the longest bone of a human body. Hence, option 4 is the correct answer. This concludes our video on the human skeletal system. Students must memorize all important bones of the body to answer questions on this topic. Thanks for watching.